quiet. Did that tell me time to go? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Got used to Miguel being out there. So we're all in. Okay. I think pretty she's already got out there by then. So we appreciate that. And uh, we'll go ahead and look at these things tonight. And pray for these things if you would. And you may got a praise. You know, answer prayer. I got to answer prayer tonight. Ms. Owens. Sigma, well, that is a blessing. This Owen's got a good report with the eye doctor. And uh, thank the Lord for that. That had to go back into another six months, so that's good. Anybody else got a praise? Anybody got it done with you? And uh, Miss Ronnie got a card. <laughs> well, I, well, I say good. She probably don't like those payments, so I don't let, don't like the payments. But at least she got something a little dependable now, huh? Thank Lord for that. And uh thank for that. And um Rav, Miss Lonnie, Miss Fuzzy's brother, saw him the other day. He's doing pr pretty good. So I uh, thank God that he's all right, but keep praying for him. He falls quite pretty regularly now, that Rav, but keep praying for him if you would. And also Mark Brown on the list that uh, has cancer and uh, Anybody got an update on him by any chance? I hope we get by to see him for too long, but I'm going to pray for him and the cancer and treatments that he's had to go through. And Miss Gail's mom and dad are sailors. Continue to pray for them. And uh, do you have you found any care? Anybody help out with them on? I hope that too much. Wow. In between, huh? Bless our hearts and pray for them. And um, seventy years. And wow, seventy years. That's pretty pretty good there. Now that's mighty good. Seventy year anniversary. That's great for Miss Gail's mom and dad. Then uh, Brother Dale's dad. Uh, continue to pray for him. Uh, the Lord will uh, again meet the needs that he has physically as well. Pray for that. And uh, other needs, I know Ms. Barbara asked we put their stepdaughter Eden on uh, prayer request as a, a lump or not there on the throat and neck area. So pray for that. Uh, you know, how old is it? She, this girl, she's not that old, is she? 13. I didn't think she was that old. 13 year old. And. Uh, Pray for that young girl, Eden, uh, uh, for a Barbara's step-granddaughter. Hopefully things will go well with the doctor and figure out what that is. And, uh, another knees here, and getting, giving direction about the bus and all that and what needs to be done with that. And, and not only that, but then somebody be willing to, in their time and everything else. I know everybody's working like crazy, but um, to run it on Wednesday nights and stuff like that would be a big help and a big blessing. Uh, you know, to pick these kids up and different things. So, uh, it'll be a, and even for Sunday, Wednesday night is not quite as bad, you know, with, with being able to run it between Todd and I, or whatever. But Sundays is the main thing to try to pick any of them up for Sundays because, uh, you know, it's a little busier time frame of speaking to people and stuff like that. It's hard to get back out there and get them back home on Sundays. So, um, just be praying that God's will, He'll, um, you know, not only help to get one, but also um, somebody to help run it and keep it going. It would be a blessing. And Miss Owens, again, she got a good report on that. Thank God for that. And Brother Curtis, keep praying for him still. And his brother, uh, Dean, and his wife also. Pray for them. And, uh, and we go on the prostate biopsy again on the 5th. We'll see what they say about that. And Miss Pam as her appointments here to pray for those. As we had her, her Miss Eddie Sue still wants us to continue to pray for her sister Bobby's daughter that uh, has cancer 
and sore. Pray for them. And Ricky, Miss Eddie Sue's son, hold him up in prayer as well as you would. And then uh, Beth, I've been a witness to uh, the folk there. And then they had a, another one, 16 year old girl. You were saying we're having some problem with that one at Gilead. Married. Pray for uh, Ashley, if y'all would, talk about babies, too, that, that um, Ashley asked would be uh, text her a little while ago and, and uh, go to Dr. Maul, but the baby's not wanting to turn just right yet. So they're, uh, they're trying to work on getting that baby, get her turned, and, and it's starting to head down. And uh, so the doctor's a little bit concerned about that, and she don't want to going to have a uh, C-section, but keep praying for that. For Ashley, if you would, and the baby. So hopefully, you'll, that baby start turning and getting ready to be, uh, be delivered. Keep praying for Dustin and uh, the need for insurance and all those things will work out in a good way uh, for the Lord's will. Anybody's got a uh, special prayer request that we can add to our list tonight besides what we got tonight? Anybody else? Got any much spoken around? He went up to Canada, you said? Right. But he but he sent him up there. Wow. The pray Brother Rogers' nephew is up in Canada with the fire. I've, I've heard a little bit about that, but I haven't seen it on the news. Is it still burning or anything? I haven't heard. Oh, sure enough. Yeah, yeah, down my top of the woods. Yeah, that's one that she met there at Ingalls. Yeah, met at Ingalls. Yes, I forgot about that. She sure did. He's still going there once in a while, I wonder. Uh, oh, yeah, they're looking back up again. Uh, yeah, I've got about that. And, and that my uh, sister works at Ingalls and Mason. They're great. So, you may have got a request or something we can again add and pray for tonight and, and uh, trust the Lord to work and in different ways and again, all the these uh, missionaries and uh, these are church and had a bunch of youngers out there, boy, but good if we can just get them back on Sunday. But again, just pray with God and uh, again work it out. As I was telling the child where to go, in our you know, meeting right before church time, that you know we we got to keep in mind that it's not just he and I that's overworked. Y'all are working like crazy. We don't want to overload y'all either. So, but pray to God to you know just send somebody along our way that that's what they got the time and willing to do. Uh, got a burden for it. It'd be great to get those uh, kids back on Sunday morning. It'd be awesome as well. It'd be great. Anybody got anything else before we get ready to go to the Lord and pray for these things tonight? Amen. I, I appreciate the way that the people to have the, the thoughts and the attitude toward um, wanting their prayer requests to be put out to us. And Miss Lena, I forgot about that too, saying that. Talk to Miss Lena uh, today and we ask that we be certain to pray for her and her physical needs as well. But uh, I got, you know, just thinking today that how many people that still, you know, express that they believe that uh, God answers prayer and they believe that grace is a praying people. And they uh, ask for things to be put on the list. And I, again, think about this today. Uh, Lord, they ask us. To pray for them because they believe in prayer and they believe that the people of grace are praying people. But Lord, how many times do, do we just, to me particularly, uh, make mention of these needs, but do we really pray for them, you know, specifically when it comes in our prayer time? And uh, so I just got really thinking that, that Lord, help us to start uh, 
specifically pray for these things by, by name, by needs in our time. Uh, our prayer meeting on Wednesday night is in order to not only just make the mention, but to really pray for them. And we will call them out by name, by particular needs. And uh, because people are counting on us to pray for them. They're asking us to. And they're, they're expecting that we will pray for them. And it's an honor and to do so, and it is a responsibility uh, to do so as well. Uh, that God would work in, in what was it, Sam? Uh, who was a prophet? Samuel. Wasn't it Samuel that said, um, God forbid that I was sin, cease to pray for you? I think it was Samuel. It wasn't uh, Samuel. Said, God forbid that I was sin. It was a sin. If somebody asks us to pray for him, we don't do it. So Saul, you know, man, this is beyond praying for him. Saul asked him to pray for him. He said, God forbid I sin. Not that if you ask me to pray for you, I better do it. I better pray for you. And uh, so all that to say, uh, but let's take time tonight to um, you know, to pray down through these particular needs uh, if we can. And and I would appreciate it. Um, I tell you what we'll do. Um, Brother Roger, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take the ones that were mentioned that are not on our list but were mentioned tonight. I'll pray for them and those that are sick at home. If you would please pick up with those special needs and go down to the care home people. And, uh, and call them out by particular names and needs. And I know it means we have to look at our list, but so be it, you know, in order to pray for them. But we'll do that tonight, and, and every week we'll start trying to do that. We'll break this down and, and, uh, and call these particular needs out as we can. So, Brother Rod, I'll, I'll take that sick at home and those that were mentioned tonight that are not on our prayer sheet, if you'll pick up the special needs on down to the, um, the care homes. And, uh, let's call every one of these out particular. And, uh, tonight before the Lord. I'll pray and then Brother Roger will pick up and go on with those that are listening there as well. Let's go, Lord, and ask Him to help on these things tonight. Father, we do thank You again for the privilege of prayer. And I never w will understand it, I don't think. I don't think I will ever comprehend uh, uh, what You want me to, to get about prayer. But God, we do thank You that uh, You hear and, and somehow, God, our petitions, our requests, supplications make a difference. And thank you for it. You know, how many times I think about it in the Bible where even um, Abraham prayed to me, you got ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. In essence, he was praying to you as he was talking to you about if he could find 50 and, and God, what you would do, you would you would hold back your judgment in, in, uh, in answer to Abraham's prayer. And Lord, in other times when when different ones would pray and you would, would hold back Moses, how many times he prayed for the children of Israel that, God, you would be long-suffering them and, and you, uh, you stopped your judgment when you were told Moses that you were just going to wipe them all out and raise up a new generation to Moses. But Moses prayed and interceded and, God, it, it turned your hand. And I don't understand all those things, God, when, but yet... You've given us an awesome privilege and responsibility to pray. And thank you for those that put their confidence in you to answer. And then those of us at Grace to actually bring these needs particularly before you. And uh, Lord, I just praise you for Miss Owens getting a good report tonight. And um, from her doctor about her eyes, thank you for that, dear God, and what you've done there. And again, Miss Rhonda being able to get that automobile, thank you, God. And uh, again, I'm sure she hates the payments. Like most of us would, Lord, I'm sure it's with a blessing and relief to be allowed. And it was mine too that hope she's got something a little more dependable to be on the road with. And thank you for working that out. And uh, Lord, trust us the right vehicle. And Lord, we do think about the others that are sick at home for Rab. And, uh, God, you continue to work in according to your purpose in his uh, life. Thank you that he's able to get up. Even though he's fallen quite a bit, he is still able to get around and Thank you for that and continue to work in, in a good way in, in that situation. And, and Mark Brown, uh, the road here, and the Lord, thank you. He, he told me that I have no reason to doubt it, that uh, he knows you as his Savior. And Lord, thank you for that. And Lord, trust that you would help things to hopefully do well and improve there with his cancer. And you take care of that in a good way, please. And 
uh, for Miss Gail's mom and dad. Uh, that you would continue to give them the strength that they need, and, and not only them, but for Miss Gail and her brother and others that try to help out, Brother Roger and them, uh, with their care. And Lord, we just uh, pray you lift them up and help them, dear God, please. And for Brother Dale's dad, with the different things that he's having physically, uh, with his body, and Lord, you would work there and help them again and uh, know what to do for his care. And Lord, keep him again safe as he travels around on the road sometimes. And Lord, different things, you keep his mind clear enough to know what's going on. And I know that thank you for it. And the unspoken we were mentioned tonight, you know where it again, each one of those are in their individual lives and individual needs that are there. Dear God, we will find you working in those situations, please, dear God. And Miss Lena, please help her and touch her body. And uh, Lord, continue to give her some good days. And Lord, for the one that uh, Beth mentioned about this uh, lady with a baby and everything, that God, you take care of that. And for Ashley, and the Lord, you'll be pleased to uh, help that uh, little girl to return and get ready, dear God, for delivery. If they could abort the C-section, Lord, and again, God, we know nothing else to do but trust you and do what you enable us to do. But ultimately, God, it's going to be up to you and just take care of them the last uh, few weeks of that delivery time. And then, Lord, also we think about uh, Brother Curtis, Miss Barbara's uh, step-granddaughter has this um, lump, growth, whatever it might be, dear God, there in her throat, neck area. A 13-year-old is a lot for that girl to have to think about in her mind. and We don't have an answer for all those things, but Lord, I pray that she will find you to be her strength and help and pray for Vince and them, God. and Oh, I believe it's Vince's uh, stepdaughter. Lord, I pray you just help them to be a sister Barbara and a curse, be a help and a blessing to this girl somehow, dear God. And Brother Roger's nephew that's up in uh, Canada helping with the firefighting. And, Lord, you keep him safe. And all of them that are serving on our protection, whether it's firefighters, police officers, military like that, that, God, you watch over them and take care of them in a good way. And thank you for them and what they do. And help our nation. Help President Biden. You touch his heart. And, God, you'll bring them to you, please, in the right way. God, you'll just keep convicting his heart. And Lord, pray for uh, President Trump as well. That God, you'll, you'll speak to him. God, you've done so much, so much in his life, the heritage that he has. Lord, more than I would ever care to see him be president, I'd rather hear him say publicly, that he has accepted you as his Lord and Savior and his life is given to you. That that heritage of his um, great aunts that prayed and, and his mom that named him the name that she gave him after that prayer warrior uh, over there in the Wells area and the Bible that my understanding he, President Trump has, God, that you're just burning in his heart and that he would somehow still come to a great reality of his walk with you and guide and work on all these things in our nation. Lord, you know worse mess is in than we know it's in. But Lord, we know it's all coming toward you. So Lord, just guide our nation and help us in every way. And our teachers, thank you for them and the awesome responsibility they have to be a, a witness for you as well as trying to educate these kids and just just a challenge it is to them. And uh, Lord, help them. Particularly those out of our church that do it for Beth and Miss Kayla. I can thank all off the top of my head, God. Thank you, and Lord, just help them as they try to deal with these circumstances. And Lord, uh, we'll thank you for it. As we continue our prayer tonight, I pray, Lord, uh, we'll bring these up as Brother Roger prays, that God will just join in in our hearts and minds and praying for these things as well as Brother Roger closes out in this prayer time. In Jesus' name we pray.
years for her health to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, praise God. Praise God. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes, praise God. Praise you, Lord. Yes, pray always that these kids have the right places to go to school. Yes, Lord God. Mm. Yes, Yes, Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, praise God. We will. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Praise you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lord, help us. Yes, Lord God, help us. Yes, Lord, help us, God. Please, Lord, help us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Lord, 
work that out, God. Work in great ways. Yes, God. Yes, Lord, please. Hmm. Yes, hooray, God. Mm. Please, Lord, help it, dear God. Yes, yes, God. Yes, or we, Lord. Yes. Yes, God. Hmm. Amen, amen. Appreciate it. Oh, boy. At Calvary, what page? I've got to look. Anybody know what page at Calvary's on? Oh. I forgot what page to find what page it was going to be on. You might know where it is. Seen that first stanza? Good, great. I thought bad. Hit them all memorized. Huh? Taking me a while to even find the index. 66. Page 66. Oh, man. Listen to that first and last stanza. Years I've spent abandoning in pride. Caring not, my Lord was crucified. Oh, man, let's sing that first last day we can tonight. Beth, hit me out of house now. Years I stand in vanity and pride. Caring not, my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my rapture soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. I appreciate it. Thank you for indulging me on that. Oh, man. Take your Bibles. We're going to begin, Lord willing, on Wednesday nights, baby, looking uh, at the, the gospel according to John's writing. Now, I, I'm always hearing how to say that, the book of John, because um, it's, it's not the gospel according to John. They're all the same gospel. But uh, the book of John. I know some have asked uh, Dustin to said he'd like to just build up some prophecy. So Lord and I start doing some of that on Sunday night sometimes. So y'all be thinking about it. If any question about uh, about prophecy you might have, 
uh, text it to me, and I'll get Dustin to answer it for us. So, uh, so if y'all got some Bible prophecy questions that you want to uh, uh, think about it one night, uh, text them to me, and uh, and we'll see about doing that. But uh, looking at that maybe on Sunday night sometime. But uh, again, uh, let us know any questions. As we study the book of John, what I encourage you to do is uh, read ahead. Get you a notepad, notebook somehow. If you don't have enough room in your in the Bible that you have, get you a notepad or whatnot. And as you read through from Wednesday to Wednesday, just read ahead in the book of John. And any thoughts, anything that God grabs your attention about something you read, write it down. And uh, keep it with you or something other. And when we get together, uh, share it. And uh it would be a blessing in my heart to see what God is showing you from uh, the reading of it. So uh, I encourage you to please do that. Begin reading the book of John. I tell people all the time, when they, uh, you know, where shall I start reading my Bible at? Somebody, you know, hasn't been reading the Bible, or they're newly saved, or just been saved for 100 years, and just never read the Bible. I say, for, for anything, don't you start some little bullets like uh, Chronicles, where they listen, the first 10 chapters will listen Listing the names of people, you'd be give up real quick if you started some little books and scratching your head that what in the world is that? Don't start the book of Revelation. If you can't figure that book out, okay, if you've been saved for 100 years, you can't figure the book of Revelation out real clear. Uh, so I encourage you to start the book of John and uh, read the book. As it's, um, it's someone has well said, and I wrote this down here as I read the other day, a, a, a comment that somebody made about the the writing of John, the book here particularly, they said it is a, wrote so small, can't even read it, it is a pool in which a child may wade and an elephant may swim. And I thought that was pretty good. The book of John is, is a pool that even a child can wade in. So how many of us as kids no, John 3.16. A child can wait in that. I heard somebody talking on a list of missions from uh, Tom Malone, I think it might have been. Some older preacher years gone past, is on in the glory now. He was talking about how a man, uh, his wife, they were talking about what? He said, we're going to go to church. I need to find somebody that's going to help us get no God. And he said, where are we going to go? He said, be ready, Sunday morning, we're going to be sitting in the driveway at such and such a time. And uh said, for what? Just be ready. And so they got ready, they were sitting in the driveway, and he said, that bus has been coming by on Sunday mornings. I've been outside, I've been hearing the kids on that bus singing, Jesus loves me, and quoting what sounds like John 3.16 as they're going down the road. He said, we're going to follow that bus wherever it's going because those kids are that happy to be going to church. That's where I want us to go. And he said, he followed that bus, and it came by, they pulled out behind it and followed that bus to the church and got saved. And so John is where you learn those things about a little kid can wade in them yet and let them can swim in it because it can use pretty deep stuff as well in this book of John. So I really encourage you to read it throughout the week and make notes. Write something down about it. And let me just help me out tonight. What is it, is there anything but about this, and this is not John the Baptist. There's their distinction. And most of us are aware of that. Uh, John the Baptist was obviously one that baptized Jesus and he was beheaded by Herod. And there's, there's no record that John the Baptist wrote anything Uh there's no, no book that is uh, any indication that John the Baptist wrote. This is a different John. Who can tell me who this John's brother was? James, wasn't it? The sons of... And what was another name that they got called? Another nickname? What's that? Sons of Thunder. Sons of Thunder. What did that tell you about? What is, why would they give a name to John? We, most paintings, they show John as a sissy. 
But they're trying to make the, if you ever seen that, they're trying to make Johnny because he was called the what disciple? Beloved disciple. And uh, so they make, make Johnny like he was a wimp or a sissy. But why do you think they would have called him sons of thunder? He and James. He might have been too sissy fight, had he? You know, what provoked Jesus, I think, to say, if I remember correctly, what led him to say that, they had somebody wasn't doing exactly right, wasn't it? And James and John said, Lord, let's call fire down and burn these suckers. They're not walking right. They ain't doing anything just like we're doing it. They're not falling the line like we independent fundamental Baptists are falling. They're doing things a little bit different. We better zap them, God. Let me call fire down. You sons of thunder. Y'all all, you just calm down. Everybody ain't going to do it the same way you're doing it. They're going to do things a little bit different. Just calm down, you sons of thunder. They were fired up and ready to get something accomplished. And zap anybody what doing right. You didn't think about John and, and what you read through the life of John and the books he wrote that maybe grabs your attention as you just think about this character of John. Again, not John the Baptist, what we call the Apostle John. What is anything in your mind that grabs you about this character as we get ready to read the book that God used him to write? Ms. Owens? I'm going to turn my hearing aids up. I don't want to miss it. There's only got some wisdom in it. One more time for me. Gave his mother correct. That's true. He wasn't ready to zap everybody one day. <laughs> That's true. And as Owen said, of all people that, um, that the Lord entrusted his mother to, it was John. So he had a compassionate and a caring spirit. That is so true and, uh, in his life. Anything else, Brother Anthony? Yes, yes. He, he was with that, wasn't he? Oh. Mm -hmm. he, he was consumed with Jesus Christ, wasn't he? He was consumed with Jesus Christ. Closest one, wasn't it? And, uh, I remember a message that my nephew Randy preached. And they were with us as youth pastor. I got what was John sat where no man sat. And, uh, right next to Jesus, John laid his head where no man ever laid his head on the bosom of Jesus. And John saw what no man saw. And that was the book of Revelation. He saw the Lord uh, high and lifted up. Man, he just. We imagine that character. What all that took place in his life and and the things. But from what we know about John, there are different opinions, and, and that's all they are. Because the Bible does not give us a date. Uh, but when? But it is as of right now a historical verification that up to this point, um, I think it's the 18th chapter from what, the, from what I've done in researching. The historian, archaeologist, what we call those people. The oldest part of the New Testament that's been, ever been discovered so far was from John the 18th chapter. Uh, it's the oldest, oldest parchment that they can find that has been uh, tracing back it's gone back to the, the writing of John. But it is written the last of all the other Gospels, writing accounts. 
Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote theirs first. And not just because they're given to us in that order, but again, his, history wise, from what they have been able to, to discover, no man really knows the exact date, but uh, they say that, that John wrote his account after, sometime way after, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote theirs. And some even wonder was the, the book of John written after Revelation? After the Isle of Patmos, we don't know. We don't know when John wrote those in first, second, third uh, books of John. When he wrote them exactly, their their time is debatable among uh, historians or whatever uh, as to when he wrote them. But we know that of all the uh, twelve apostles, including Paul, John outlived them all, and. Uh, some again say, was, was he really put to death or did he die in old age? We don't know for certain. But John uh, did seem to outlive them all. And the wall that God had for him. And he penned that last book of Revelation. But a unique character. And God uses the character of people when he had them write the, the Bible. And that's what makes it so amazing. That God could still use their character, their personality, their nature in a great way. They would come out in their writings, and yet God controlled it all to accomplish His purpose with it. It was, it was inspired of God. I know, again, in, in Bible school and everything, when you read it, they, these books like the Hebrews, they um, they try to figure out who wrote the book of Hebrews. And their, their logic is different books like that. They'll say, oh, it follows the personality of Paul or whatever. And so God uses those things of that individual as, again, John being not only the sons of thunder, that you see him, what he was seeing in Revelation, and, and he would pray, even so, come, Lord, we're ready for you to come and take care of business and establish your kingdom. When you read the book of Revelation, boy, he was praying for the Lord to come back. He was ready to put in put in all this nonsense. Yet at the same time, you see him with compassion and would write about the love of God and how God loved and cared because he saw that. And he obviously, that was, a, as Miss Owen said, a part of his character because Jesus noted him to take care of his mother. If he'd given him to Peter, she probably would have been hungry for a long time. Peter probably would not have took care of her uh, very well. I don't know. But, uh, but he chose John because there was something that he used in his character about it. And again, I agree with a lot with different folk that make comments about the um, the, the writings of the Word of God, and and particularly these four books that we call the the Gospel books: Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I do believe that when you read each one of these four accounts, you will understand if you think about that person, you can understand a lot about how God used him, what He used him to write. Uh, Matthew, obviously he was a, a very Jewish-minded person. And when you read the book of Matthew, so much of it is focused on the Jewish mindset, the Jewish traditions. You'll find in there when it comes down to like the requirements on marriage that only Matthew recorded the Luke and them, Mark and them, they didn't record. They said if a man put away his wife, and Mary and commit adultery. Matthew included a phrase, except to be for fornication. And I personally take that to be a, 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 a take of the Jewish uh, right, because you remember when, Matt, when, when Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. The book of Matthew gives the account. No other book did. Matthew gives the account that Joseph was legally free to give her a right to divorcement. You remember that? That, that, jo, that the Bible says uh, Joseph being a just man, a godly man, was going to write her a letter of divorcement because she had been unfaithful, and that was a Jewish law. If in that betrothal period, that engagement period, when legally 
you're bound to that husband. But you hadn't officially been married yet. He had to still give her a divorce. Even though they had never actually been married, they were engaged. That's reading it said he would give her a right to divorce, but put her away. He had to. She could not just leave. He had to do that by the Jewish law. He found fornication in her during that engagement period. So Matthew's one who recorded those things. But he's written, he's writing to a lot of the Jewish custom laws and things. And Matthew, I'm convinced, when you read his book or recording that he that God used him to write, he emphasized Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of David, the rightful heir to the throne, as the 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 promised Messiah. Again, Jews were looking for the Messiah. So he presented everything he could in his right, and you'll find more indications to the fact that Jesus was the Messiah, the promised coming one to the Jews' deliverer that would deliver them, as he uh, recorded the Sermon on the Mount and all those things, that he would be the one that would deliver them from the bondage of Rome. And then Mark come along, and, and God used him to write the, the book, again, recording the gospel events, and he used a lot of the same uh, accounts that most, that Matthew and Luke did. They shared a lot of the same recordings. But Mark seems to emphasize more about Jesus being a servant to people. That Jesus come as a servant, not to seek to be served, but to serve. Not to be ministered to, but to minister. you find those in Mark's account, as he emphasized the fact that Jesus did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister. And Dr. Luke come on the scene, and being, they think, a physical doctor, that uh, physician or literal doctor, yeah, that's the reason they think he traveled with Paul because to help Paul all the many times he got beat. He had to have a, prior, a personal care physician to go along with him. So Dr. Luke, come on, he wasn't an apostle. He come on later in life. All apparently led him to the Lord. And he began and he wrote the book of Acts, we believe, and was a, a companion to the apostle Paul as his physician. But Dr. Luke, God used him to write the book of Luke. And he gave a lot of note to the birth. He was a doctor. He gave a lot of, a lot of notation to, about the birth of Jesus Christ and studying about Jesus. And Luke wanted to present Jesus, as he wrote it, as a son of man. That he was presenting the fact that about Joseph and Mary and how Jesus you know, grew up with them and, and the things that he would present. Luke is a fact that this was the son of man. He was flesh. He was a baby born. He gave more attention to that than, than the others did about the, the, the birth, the babiness of Jesus Christ. And he was a little man. He was circumcised. Luke recorded all of that. But as a, as a regular baby, as a man, he was circumcised and presented to God as a regular Jewish baby would be done. John, as we've already made reference to, he emphasizes throughout his writing the deity of Jesus Christ. That he is the Son of God. You will find that over and over that he is the Son of God. We're going to see in these first few verses. I think as Brother Anthony mentioned, what, seven times John proclaims the recording where Jesus said, I am. He's emphasizing what he, if he wrote this book after Revelation, I don't know. Or after Revelation, uh, he wrote uh, he wrote John and wrote Revelation. Either way it went. He probably wrote Revelation because that seemed to seal the book. I'd almost think he wrote the gospel according to John first because it seems the book of Revelation, he said, don't you add anything else? This is the final book. If I get the indication he, he wrote the book of Revelation, he'd already penned the rest of his book. That's my personal thoughts because he concluded the book of Revelation. Don't you have to take away. The book has been sealed. And uh, the Word of God has been delivered, been given. There'd be nothing else to be recorded outside of the book of Revelation. But he emphasizes that throughout this time about how um, that that's what he wanted to present, those thoughts about Jesus as being the Son of God along that line. And look at, uh, who look up John 20, verses 30 and 31. And somebody else look at 1 John 
5.13. John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. And then 1 John 5.13. Has somebody got John 20, verses 30 and 31 for me? You got it, Beth? You said? You see, you get ready to close that book out. What he said? He said, I couldn't write everything that happened, but I wrote this. That you may believe that he is the Son of God. That's what John wanted to emphasize. He wasn't the Son of Man. John said, how this was the God man. He was the God man. He didn't add anything to Luke's in other account. He just, that's what he wanted to emphasize. Who got 1 John chapter 5, verse 13? Uh, uh, Roger? What, twice there, wasn't it? He emphasized the fact, you better be certain you believe in the Son of God. I wrote these things. You know who he is. You know who he is, that he is the Son of God. You see, that's his emphasis throughout it. And now we get into this book a little bit now. And uh, let's look at these first two verses. And uh, so hopefully next, on through this week, you read on down. And uh, and we just take it verse by verse, a section, and go down through and... and uh, Look at them and, and glean from what you have. And, and I got a lot of verses, side notes, written here beside this. Verses 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Boy, that is a lot in two short verses, isn't it? An awful lot. Let's just take that first phrase there. In the beginning. In the beginning. What does that say to anybody? In the beginning. What's that? Genesis 1 1. In the beginning. But Beth pointed out something. Do you remember what she said to me a few weeks ago in your devotional time? Okay, <laughs> sometimes he, he he was already there, but he didn't start. He didn't start at the beginning. He was already there. He was there. And so in the beginning, it didn't. Again, what happened? It was there at that very beginning that a while time, but it was already there. It wasn't. Uh, you know, God, God already was existing. It just. Beginning just started the things uh, that come into, into being with it. So in that beginning, back to Genesis 1, and you ought to mark that there. And I've said it before, and I, I read it. It wasn't original with me by no means. But if we would believe Genesis 1-1, anybody quote that for me? Genesis 1-1? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And someone has said, if we believe Genesis 1-1, we would not have a single problem believing any miracle that was recorded in the New, in the Old Testament or the New. If we believe in the beginning God created heaven and earth, you'll have a bit of problem believing he can divide the Red Sea. You'll have a bit of problem believing he can create a fish big enough to swallow a man and keep him alive for three days. you have a bit of problem believing that he can take that sun and turn it back for almost a day. You don't have any problem believing that he can say, be still and don't you move another bit and the earth not collapse because it wasn't rotating. If you and I believe Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth, no miracle would be a stumbling block if we just believe John 1-1. I, I believe that preacher had a dead on the head. If I believe God created it, then he can do with it what he wants to do with it, however he wants to do with it. He can stop that sun in the orbit of the earth, and we'll never lose one sense of creative being. It, it won't just collapse as we think the earth. If it ever stops and rotates, it's going to explode. Not if God stops it. He created it. And if we believe John 1-1, one, one, 
You'll never have a problem believing anything else about the book of Revelation or anything else to do with Jesus Christ. If we believe Genesis 1-1, no miracle could ever be a stumbling block. And if you believe John 1-1, Jesus Christ will never be a stumbling block to you. You will believe that everything that is written about him is so. But the people that do not believe Jesus Christ is who he is. They have a problem with John 1-1. They've got to do away with John 1-1. They've got to reword it. They've got to change the wording of it. Because they can't believe John 1-1 and believe that he's anything else but who he said he was. In the beginning was the Word. The Word. I think Beth made a reference to this verse, but who look up Revelation 19.13? That's where it was at. Revelation 19.13. And the Word. Revelation 19.13. It says here in John 1.14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. You got it, Brother um, Green? Oh, you hear that? In that book of Revelation, what all names did God have for him? But his name is called the Word. The Word is there. Oh, man, was, was some good stuff there now. Good stuff. Man, a living. The Word. Somebody, um, look at the word Revelation. You still there in Revelation, Brother Green? Look at verses, chapter 1, verses 8 and 11. Revelation 1, verses 8 and 11, if you're still there. Revelation 1, verses 8 and 11. Verse 11. I am, what, Alpha? Okay, tell me, what is Alpha and what's Omega? It's like our A and Z. Our A and Z. Alpha, it would be their A, and Alpha and Omega, Omega would be their Z. I don't think they got as many letters as we got. But it's their first and last letter in their alphabet. In order to make a word, you have to have what, Beth? Have to have alphabet. Have to have letters. You can't make a word without the alphabet. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the alphabet. <laughs> you can't make a word without me. Woo, that gets good. You can't make a word without Jesus. He is A and Z. I'm Alpha and Omega. I am every letter of the alphabet. Every word that's ever made comes from me. I am all things. Wow. And you just think about it. We ain't going to be getting further than this right here. It's already 730. A word. I can say Alpha or A, A, B, C. It won't mean too much to you. What if I say bird? Does something begin to happen? Do you begin to think about a bird? I ought to say Cat. You think about I got to kill some? <laughs> no, what do you think about? When you say cat, when you say a word, it puts a visual concept to it. I'm Alpha and Omega, Jesus said. I'm the alphabet. 
but I am the Word. I am the Word. He is what we can see and conceive about the invisible God. He is everything that is invisible, and we're there to see that. Let me see what verse that might well be. That in uh, Colossians one eighteen, is that right? Colossians one eighteen. That might be the one I'm looking at. Colossians one eighteen, and he is the head of the body, the church, which is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that of all things might have the preeminence. That ain't what I'm looking for. About the image. Oh, verse 15, verse 15, of Colossians 1, 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, the, invisible, the image of the invisible God. He's the Word. When we hear the Word, Jesus, our minds begin to picture the image of the invisible God. Everything that God wanted us to see about His invisible God, He put into Word. He combined the alphabet to a Word that would reflect Him and what He wanted us to see. And we know that Word to be Jesus. Wow, man. We got to go. We even got past the first section of verse number one. When you study on that, write some verses down and see what to come what you come with verse the rest of verses one and two. And next week, Lord willing, let's see what God has and what He's been showing you as you study about Jesus. Who He is. John said, I wrote these things. I want you to know exactly who He is. I don't want you to have any if and a buts about in your mind. I want you to know beyond any shall of a doubt. You'll believe who this Jesus is. I'm going to tell you all about. Right? Good stuff, isn't it? Great stuff. Oh, man. Brother Green dismisses in prayer, brother. Yes. Yes, you are, God. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, yes. Hmm. Yes, Lord, thank you for it, God. Hmm. Yes, God. Amen, amen. God bless y'all. See you alone Sunday. Good Lord.